if you shower or brush your teeth or try to make your hair look presentable, here's some good news. Dollar Shave Club has a lot of stuff to help you out. Dollar Shave Club delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. Shampoo, conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, hair gel, even a wipe that leaves your tush feeling tingly clean. All of Dollar Shave Club's products are made with top shelf ingredients that won't break your budget. You'll feel the difference. Plus, shipping is free with your membership. And here's a great way to try a bunch of Dollar Shave Club's products for just five bucks. You can get their daily essential starter set. It comes with body cleanser, one wipe Charlie's, their amazing butt wipes, and their world famous shave butter. And their best razor, the Six Blade Executive. Keep the blades coming for a few more bucks a month and add in a shampoo, toothpaste, or anything else you need. Check it all out at dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash chat. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. The damage this morning as we have walked now almost 20 blocks is never ending. People's belongings, boats on top of homes, uh, roofs that are wedged into condo buildings. And it goes inland. It doesn't just stop right at the coast. Absolutely frightening. A terrifying thing. I mean, Michael, the damage it's done in the panhandle in particular uh mexico beach and and panama beach is frightening the reality is is it looks like it actually looks like hiroshima with color six people have died total when you think about the damage is done and i was saying this earlier if i showed you a picture of it i said hey look at this and you haven't seen the news you didn't know what was going on any of that stuff, you would look and go, oh, my God, how many people died? Was it thousands? Was it tens of thousands? And you're like, six. You're like, what? 6,000? That's a huge. No, six. Wow. Insane. Absolutely insane what has happened. And uh, it is. It is crazy. The amount of work that's going to go into this, how long this is going to take to get things even somewhat back to normal, not just in uh, in Florida, but you've got Georgia. This is the strongest hurricane to hit Georgia since 18, the 1890s. I mean, that's, that's how long it's been since a storm uh, that strong came ashore from the Gulf and then was still at a category two, three strength crossing into Georgia you know, some 50 or so miles inland. Yeah, and it, it is it is nuts, and it is a, it, this is going to take a very, very, very long time for them to dig out of. In some of these places, they are never going to get back to normalcy and ever. And at other times, you're just looking to get back the day-to-day basics of what's going on. This is Governor Roy Cooper of, uh, of uh, North Carolina. High winds up to 60 miles an hour are bringing down trees and power lines, and currently nearly 400,000 households in the state are without power. Yeah, so this is going to be a really just a very interesting thing to see how FEMA and everybody deals with this because we have this situation here where we said floors we've had several other things that have rolled through we look up and we say to ourselves do we have the do we have the enough capability to help out again or is America just exhausted by a lot of this and uh, I I haven't do you remember was it producer Phil last year what was the one that hit Houston I keep there was so many of them last year was the three was that Maria that's the first I think so and we couldn't, you couldn't turn on TV, you couldn't do anything without somebody saying, text the Red Cross to X, Y, and Z. And, you know, you text that, it's, it's 10 bucks. I think just about everybody I knew did it, uh, uh, myself included. I haven't seen any of that. It's almost like, uh, But then at the same time, it's like, what do you need? You know, what they need is shelter. What they need is hotels. And for some of these people, they know lo- a month ago, they're going about their lives. And here it is now. And they may never return to where they once were. They're now going to be living in a different city or state, potentially. That is what's insane. In fact, uh, there was a school in Florida that got destroyed 
And the school was actually educating kids that had gone through, in, in Puerto Rico, uh, the horrific storm there. That is the kind of, it, same thing what happened in Houston last year, right? A lot of those people were displaced because of Katrina. And you're like, wow, it's just, it's insane. It is just insane. But the fact that only six people have died is shows you first of all that people listen and secondly and this is something i think is amazing is is that you know the response has been incredible and it has been a massive uh response and the way that this thing has been handled the amount of of preparation that's gone into this knowing exactly what is coming has been has been huge we have 3500 florida national guard with more than 1000 high water vehicles 13 helicopters and 16 boats for humanitarian assistance, security operations, and search and rescue. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a crazy, crazy uh, situation to see some of these places. Because this isn't, I mean, we're not talking about a third world country. I don't know parts of Florida, a little sketchy. But we're not talking about a third world country. We're not talking about, this isn't Haiti, right? This isn't, you know, a uh, fishing village in, in, in Indonesia or Thailand. This is the United States of America. And what Michael did to some of these areas is just absolutely ferocious. It looks like Hiroshima with color. You couldn't, I mean, it is, it, it has changed the landscape of, of some of these areas. It is huge. 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Well, it is another day and it was an ugly day. Worries about rising interest rates, signs of a slowdown in the global economy, and concerns over U.S.-China trade sent the markets into a tailspin again today. The Dow plunged more than 540 points, down over 1,300 in the past two sessions, and off more than 5%, the most it's given up since February. Yeah, and the last couple days it's down uh, big time. Why? Well, I mean, here's the thing. Depends on who you talk to. A lot of people are looking, and this is, I think, the fight that's going on with the Fed between the rates, interest rates, and they walk these weird fine lines of trying to fight inflation, raising rates in a way that things don't get out of control, trying to fight hyperinflation, doing all of these kind of things. You've got a lot of companies out there as we head into the fourth quarter. They're looking at their numbers, not only retail, but things look pretty good, but you've got some tech issues as well. So people are panicking. Smart money, you know what they're doing? If they're not on the sidelines, they're looking right now, what pulled back that I can make money off of, uh, but should you freak out? Yeah, I don't think so. Hold on, uh, you know, go read a book, take a walk, go work out, do something, but don't obsess about you know what is in all likelihood a pretty run of the mill normal market pullback. Absolutely, and 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 you got to remember too, some of the people that you see in the pullback, some of this stuff where you see it starting to collapse, people are selling off because they made a huge profit. They're looking for the next something. They're thinking, hey, things here, especially tech stocks, maybe at this moment in time, completely overvalued. The average person goes, oh, my God, it's a recession. It's coming. It can't be stopped. Oh, oh the interest rates are an interesting thing. Tra- uh, Trump came out yesterday. He kind of hammered on the interest rates. And this is important. Remember, we're heading into a midterm. We're less than four weeks away from the midterm. There's battles going on everywhere. The Republicans have been kind of mum in a lot of the way that they deal with because of the Kavanaugh thing and the big fight that's going on there. But as they head into this, you've got an economy that is booming. You've got a fourth quarter here, which I think is going to be tremendous. And I think in a particular way that we haven't seen in a long time, where we're going to see retailers with huge smiles on their faces. And... But it just because of what happened in 2007, 2008, there is a worry there. I get that. Trust me, we've got a lot of issues when it comes to that. But the interest rate thing is very important. And that's one of those things, especially as you head into fourth quarter, people, you know, it's Christmas. Maybe I'll take out a credit card, do something like that. I want to have a good year. Money's getting more expensive. Now that the economy is doing better, interest rates are rising. And uh, the bond market uh, kind of got that memo last week. And the stock market got that memo this week. Uh, and as a result, investors are predictably throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum. Yeah, yeah. But it's not to panic. And I think too often because we see something and, and it's and it's down like 12, 1,300 points. I've got these people that tweet at me all the time. Well, Trump's economy's dying now. They're not understanding the cyclical nature. They're not understanding the investing nature of the way things are going. They don't get all of that. So they're like, ah, and it's like, slow your roll. Take a deep breath. Why do we need somebody to fail for your side to succeed? That, to me, 
is ridiculous. 323-538-2423. At Chad Manson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Yes, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about Kanye. Was it surreal? Hell yeah, was it surreal? Was it interesting? Hell yeah, it was interesting. Was it everything that anybody thought it was going to be? Who can predict what any of these things are going to be when these two guys and these two egos get together? I'm surprised the cameras got in there. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Guess what, kids? We've got a poll question up. I want to talk to you about that. But first, let's talk about my sleeping habits and how you can make them like yours. What? Yeah, my pillow. Incredible. My pillow is amazing. 100% machine washable and dryable. Made in the USA. Backed by a 10-year warranty. This is why you should get it. Sleep is vitally important. Getting rest for your body is incredible. Not only do you recharge your batteries, you're more productive the next day. Heart health. They show that the more you sleep, the better you sleep, the more well-rested you are. It's better for your health, heart-wise, reduces strokes, reduces blood pressure. Oh, yeah. And weight loss. Why? Because if you're tired, you're always looking for energy, you're always snacking. Guess what happens? You eat more. When you have more energy... You don't have to worry about it. You burn fat. Get what I'm going here? That's why my pillow. Small little thing. Just a smidge of a change goes a long way. I try not to go anywhere without it. I, the other day, didn't have my pillow. It was an awful night. Last night, on my MyPillow, out like a light, I slept six plus hours. It was amazing. Incredible. Best night's sleep I've had in forever. Get yours today. Buy one, get one free. You buy a pillow, you get a pillow. Buy one pillow, Get another pillow. Go to MyPillow.com. That's MyPillow.com. Use promo code Benson, B-E-N-S-O-N. Two pillows for the price of one. World's most comfortable pillow. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Or call them on the the old telephone. 800-944-4975. 800-944-4975. Or MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. You got your urban word of the day and the Twitter poll. Plus, yes, kids, Kanye. Chad Benson Show. Being antisocial sucks. Hang with Chad's friends on Facebook, The Chad Benson Show. And if you just need some alone time, head on over to Twitter at Chad Benson Show. Either way, we can't wait to meet the real you. It was a bizarre scene in the Oval Office. President Trump sitting at the Resolute desk. Seated across from him, rap artist Kanye West wearing a red Make America Great Again hat. It was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. You made a Superman. That was, that's my favorite superhero. Stop and frisk does not help the relationship. We can do it a different way, Kanye. I'm totally open. We have to release the love. Uh, a liberal will try to control a black person through the concept of racism. I love this guy right here. If he don't look good, we don't look good. He might not have expected to have a crazy mother like Kanye West. I'll tell you what, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> I love this guy right that's here. Really, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's really nice. And that's from the heart. I didn't want to put you in that position. You know, but, but that's from the heart. Special guy. Yeah. Wow. It was it was crazy. It was chaotic. Jim Brown was there too. And by the way, so they interviewed Jim Brown afterwards and he said, and here's a guy who was, you know, this is a guy who faced racism in a way that a younger generation has not faced, no matter how much they want to scream and yell about all the microaggressions and stuff. If we're honest with ourselves, uh, grandpa, great grandpa, and great great grandpa faced racism, the kind of racism which is, thank goodness, slowly but surely, it's never going to be gone, but it's sure in the hell what it, uh, isn't what it once was. And they asked him, and this was a guy who was an outspoken civil rights leader at the time, and he had his issues as well. Uh, Jim Brown, the great football player, but first of all, he kept calling Kanye Conroy. Uh, Conroy. Uh, uh, but he, uh, he said, look, I don't think anybody should kneel. We're a family and we need to figure things out because they talked about, yes, uh, policing, all kinds of things. It was all over the place. And at times it was surreal. Kanye was holding court and it was interesting, but he said, and, and People always say, why is the right obsessed with Kanye and they're so happy for him? And I said, it's not the fact that he likes the president, doesn't like the president, because I don't think he agrees with everything with the president. I I really don't. The the fact is, is he's got a platform. He likes some of the stuff. Their egos match each other. Right. They're both married to powerful women. And 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 they may they get each other. Right. Like they get each other. But 
It's the fact that he doesn't go in step and toe with the left. That he's willing to go, I really don't care. I'm doing my own thing, right? I'm doing my own thing. But something, and and, and I said this to, to a couple of people, they tweeted at me. It's like, why are you guys so obsessed? And I said, it's because you cheered him when he said George Bush hates black people, right? You cheered him. But now when he's not on that same kind of path, you're pissed off and angry, right? He, then he was a genius. Now he's insane. So that's what you're going to do. But he said something today, and I said, even if he's insane, guys, I just want you to understand this. Just because he may have some screws loose and he was kind of all over the place today doesn't mean that some of the stuff he's not saying doesn't have valid points. What I need Saturday Night Live to improve on and what I need the liberals to improve on is if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. True. Trump's all that's true. He's, he's right. He's not lying. And that is true. Something I've been saying. Something I've been saying over and over and over and over and over again. The want to see the other side fail. It's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. The want to see the other side fall apart because that's the way you feel you can get power is ridiculous. The hope that the president fails, the Bill Maher saying, I hope we have a recession, the people cheering 1,400 points coming off the Dow in two days because they're hoping this happens is insane. That is that is false. That is not patriotic as, a, a, at all. Zero zilch nada. It's, it's, it's a sad, sad thing. But he was all over the place. He was, uh, the hat thing was just, just crazy. They talked about all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, and, and it, to me it was, it, it was, again, it was a real moment in the White House. When we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. Yeah, but I mean, it's different. I mean, I, he, he said a lot of stuff that I think was a bit out there. Like, that's one of them. One of the reasons that people make stuff cheap everywhere. And Trump even fact-checked him on Foxconn and a few other things. But some of the reasons that people do the things that they do, like go elsewhere, is because we here demand cheap goods. But I understand what he was trying to do. And I think he said some stuff today that was real. And, and just because you don't like him because he's not on your team anymore as far as what goes because he's wearing a Make America Great Again hat, just because of that doesn't mean that all the things that he's saying should be discounted because a lot of times it's true, right? But he did go off on some wacky tangents. He did. He did. He absolutely did. He went off on some crazy stuff. And you're just like, he said he's bipolar, but not bipolar. He's a genius. He tested the 98 percentile. He was all over the place. He was showing Trump stuff on phones because apparently he wants to design cars. I don't know. It is what it is. But it was a surreal moment in the White House today. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. What if you're black and you're a babysitter? What do you hear this story? Is Amazon too big? We're going to touch on that as well. It is the Chad Benson Show. Whoop dee dee scoop. Whoop dee dee scoop poop. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Jamal Khashoggi walked into the Saudi consulate in Turkey last week and hasn't been heard from since. Senator Chris Murphy says he's seen nothing to suggest Khashoggi is still alive. A bipartisan group of senators now calling on President Trump to open an investigation and impose sanctions if it's determined the Saudis violated Khashoggi's human rights. Yeah, if you've not followed this, this is very interesting. It has gotten ugly and it is bizarre. So you had this journalist in Turkey, go to the Saudi Arabian embassy, and he's gone now. He's disappeared. And it looks like it was a hit job. And we're in the middle of a $100 billion deal, arms deal, with the Saudis 
And people are starting to ask serious questions about where in God's name is this guy? And uh, let me tell you something. This is Trump really wants this deal done because the way he looks at this deal is it's going to get done with us or it's going to get done with somebody else. Right. Like it's going to get did with us or the Russians are going to have a chance to, to, to get this done. I don't like the concept of stopping an investment of $110 billion into the United States. Uh, because you know what they're going to do? They're going to take that money and spend it in Russia or China or someplace else. China. Uh, but in saying that, you have senators on both sides of the aisle coming out and saying, yeah, uh, we may put an end to this deal uh, because we need to know what's up with this guy. Where is he? What happened? Because some of the footage, you look like there was like a hit squad coming after this guy like these and, and just disappeared. With the exception of Israel, I trust uh, everyone else in the Middle East about as much as I trust gas station station sushi. <laughs> that is hilarious right there. That that that's how much some of these people uh trust. That's John Kennedy, Republican, Louisiana. You've had Lindsey Graham come out and talk about it. I think the president's done it just right. We want to have a relationship with Saudi Arabia. They're a strategic partner there. Uh, mortal enemy of the Iranians here, helping us on, on terrorism. Yeah. And at the same time, you can't have something like this. You can't have somebody disappear. And there is a real sense that this thing could blow up in this entire deal. And the question is why? Where is he? What happened to this guy? I can understand why he'd be cautious, but um, I do think that uh, over the next several days, it's likely that that uh, tenor will change a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. But the the thought process is that they may put an end to it. It's another one of those. I mean, in the last couple of weeks, we've seen what we had the Interpol guy right now. This it is. It's very bizarre. And they just disappear. And what happened? What took place? Where did they take him? I mean, going into an embassy and then boom, gone. And what happens? It's a $110 billion deal that they kill. Somebody else is going to get it. I saw people today going, he values human life more. I mean, he values money more than he does human life. We're not talking. I mean, this is a this is a massive deal for a lot of people whose lives depend on this kind of stuff. But Saudi Arabia, let's be real. We like them because they hate the Iranians. That's it. They had oil and we hate the, they hate the Iranians. That's why we like them. That's it. How many of the uh, people? Oh, 19. Remember that? Remember, remember 9-11? Remember that? Remember all of them? How many of them were from Saudi Arabia? There's some issues here. Absolutely. But... Trump's looking at it in a different way, saying, well, you know what? That sounds horrible. We need to figure this entire thing out. We've got to start figuring this thing out in saying that uh, it's $110 billion. That's that's a lot of money could be coming to the United States. And they're going to spend it, and they may spend it with somebody else. And th- those those people are going to get the money, China or Russia. And what are they going to do with it? 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter you could tweet at us. Love hearing from you. So uh, very interesting. The The poll question of the day is one of third parties. You know, when I saw well today, you know, you, you've got Kanye in there and he's doing his Kanye stuff because that's what Kanye does. And it was interesting. He was holding court. Uh, but my question is, you know, why can't we talk to one another? Civility's gone and we're going to dig deeper into it a little bit later. But we need a solid third party and here's the thing there's something i've talked about before when it comes to authorities we don't need a third party that's equal you can make a lot of noise being strong and small meaning if you took 20 seats 30 seats in the house maybe five or six seats in the senate right you take anywhere between you know you've got in 10 to 15 percent 
you can do a lot of things. You can. You can do a lot of things. And I think we need a real party. And I'm talking about the Green Party, right, with Jill Stein. I'm not talking about Gary Johnson because, oh, God, that, he just, it was awful. Can we just admit it, right? Like, can we? Right? I'm not talking about McAvee's insane, although every day Phil laughs at me. He's like, he's nuts. He just wants to talk about Bitcoin. That's why he's running for president. Blockchain. <laughs> he's insane. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about somebody in a party that is real, that I think could, uh, uh, you know, can see all sides and is there more for the, almost at times, I think, to referee and to rein him in. The mature party, we'll call it. <laughs> What do you think, though? Would you be open, and could you be open to a third party? That's not insane, that's not crazy, but a real party. 50% of you so far say, yes, I can. 4% say, nope. 46% says, depend on the politics. And I think the politics would be very much an independent-minded look at things. And so let's just say, let's let's break this down, how this would work. So you've got a party that is somewhat in power, right, that has the most you're going to get a plurality. Yes, you are. Right. But you've got a party that's got then you've got another party. You know, so the Republicans, the Democrats, one of those is going to have the most seats. The second seats is going to be the other one. Then the third is the one that's going to be swayed because, you know, those two can't stand each other. And right now it's worse than ever before. So what ends up happening is they're going to have to come to you to get stuff done. And if you're able to say, look, I understand what you're doing there, and I agree with this, this, and this, but you know what? If you want our vote, you got to get rid of this, you got to get rid of this, you got to get rid of this, because I see it from their side, too. So it is a way to move things through, and that might be the best way to break the gridlock. In many ways, just like being an independent, who do both sides cater to come election time? Who is the vote they need? The independents. Because they're the ones that are going to sway. Because we're so driven and separated right now. They got to come and they got to go, okay, 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 okay. We need your vote. What do we have to do? I think in a bigger way, if we could do something like this, I think it would change a lot. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Babysitting while black. I'm babysitting, right? Y'all see, look, I got... I got two kids in the backseat with me. I'm babysitting. There's this lady across the street. We just came from Subway and Walmart. This lady over here, she's following me because I got two kids in the backseat that does not look like me. So that guy right there, Corey Lewis is his name, and he is babysitting, and he does a mentoring program, and, and you know, he looks to be in his mid-20s, early 30s kind of thing, and he's got like a 8- and 10-year-old boy and girl in the back, and they happen to be white, and he happens to be black, and there's a woman who is worried that these two kids have been taken away, snatched from their parents, because stranger danger is everywhere. This lady has took it upon herself to say that she's going to take my plate down and call the police. It's crazy. It's, it's 2018, and this is what I got to deal with. I can't go out with two kids that do not look like me and, and without something being weird. You see the lady is still not moving. She is harassing me because I have two kids that do not look like me. Yeah. And so she's following them. And it's a very weird situation. Okay, first of all, he takes them to Subway, and then he takes them to Walmart. If you're going to kidnap somebody, Right. Like, let's just say I've seen enough kidnappy shows to know that. You're probably not going to take them outdoors, right? Like they usually put them in a room where you can't scream and they've got the room soundproofed and those kind of things. Like if you're going to do that, that you're not like, hey, before we get to this part where I totally kidnap you and take you and hide you forever. Why don't we go get a sub sandwich? We'll talk about what your kidnapping is going to be like. Maybe we'll go to Walmart. We can get you some stuff to kind of just kill time. You know, you're probably not going to do that. And now we live in a world of see something, say something. I get that. But here's my thing with this. If it's a white guy with two black or Asian kids or Hispanic kids, they're probably thinking, oh, he adopted them. Or that's a good thing that they're doing there. Yeah. Now. I also think that gender has something to do with it, because I think if it was a black woman with two white kids, I don't think anybody would have cared as much. So I think there's a little, you know, like it's a gender thing. But this was ridiculous. Eventually, the lady calls the popo. Let's we'll see what the police got to say about this. Apparently, she felt like she saw you at Walmart. I was at Walmart, yeah. I'm babys- I got two kids, I'm babysitting. We ate at Subway at Walmart. 
went and got some gas. She pulled up talking about some, are the kids okay? She left, came back, asked to see the little girl so she can ask her if she, does she know who I am. Yeah. And then I went over to get some gas at Murphy's. Oh, yeah. She came back there and, 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 just, and stayed there. Yeah, and, and eventually the police go, are you guys okay? And they're like, yeah, you know, and they called the parents or the mom of of the kids and the mom thought it was a joke. She's like, what? This is a joke, right? And they're like, no, this is for real. It'll be made into something big. Uh, I, I say take a step back. Again, we live in a world of see something, say something. And if it was a white guy with two black kids, probably not having the same issue. Don't know. Maybe. But, you know, if it's a white guy with two Asians, you know, two little Asian kids, probably not going to say anything. Hispanic kids probably not going to say anything. And I also say if it was a black woman with two white kids, probably wouldn't have said anything. It might be just, you know what, it might be a gender thing more than anything else. Think about that. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter tweet at us. Damn men. They're just the worst, aren't they? And we get blamed for everything, Phil. Everything. I just want you to know that. We get blamed for everything. So I, being of sound mind, love my Dollar Shave Club. Like, I am never giving it up, Ever. Long before they sponsored me, long before they came on the show, long before any of these things, I was a Dollar Shave Club member. I have always used Dollar Shave Club since the time I've got it, and now that they've expanded, I use everything. I mean, I, I've i got their Amber Lavender Body Cleanser. That's what I started with when they started coming out with all these other products. But in my beard, one of the things that I tell people is right now I'm kind of growing out my beard a little bit more. Uh, what do I do? Well, I've got, they got beard oil. And it's great. Plus, I still have to shave my neck and do stuff like that because I don't look weird. So it, it, it is incredible what they have. But it's not, you know, to me, I, I like to feel good. And it helps me feel good. It helps me smell good. And that's a great thing. They've got everything you need to look, smell, and feel fantastic. Toothpaste, toothbrush. They've got uh, uh, hair care products like you couldn't believe, pomade, things like that. They've got hand lotion. They've got it all. Shampoo, conditioner. So what are you waiting for? Five bucks right now. Free shipping. And here's the great thing. It ships at regular price after this. The regular price is nothing compared to going to the stores and buying a mixed match of hodgepodge of crap. You're going to get the high quality, amazing ingredients of Dollar Shave Club at, at rock bottom prices. Try it for yourself. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. C H A D B E N S O N. Amazon. Too big? Chad Benson Show. <laughs> While pointless pundits ponder what was, Chad wisely wonders, what's next? FEMA and first responders are on the ground, and we have teams currently conducting search and rescue missions. By the way, the Coast Guard has been incredible. They've saved many lives. Yeah, so far only six people have died because of Michael, but hundreds of thousands of people are going to be out with, without power for, for quite a long time. It is a uh, uh, It was just a ferocious monster of a storm, and it, it in its wake, it left devastation in some areas, I think, may never, ever be anywhere close to being the same. Uh, but uh, the first responders are still out there working, as is the Cajun Navy. So watch us them today out there doing their thing, trying to rescue people and rescuing animals and anything else they could uh, uh, they could save. And it's uh, they're talking about it's in a lot of places it's already dried out, but in some areas where they got the uh, Florence stuff, there's still massive saturation. So it's going to be a while for 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 some of these people to ever even get back in to see what they have. And for some, they're going to go back in and go, "We got nothing. We're starting from scratch." Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter is uh, the Amazon. Uh, is it too big? You know, Sears is looking like they're going to file for bankruptcy, bankruptcy, and they're on the way out, 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 because the banks are saying, you know what, we don't think we're going to lend you guys any more money. It's time for you to liquidate everything. You look over there, and there's Amazon. Effectively, we've had a kind of a culling of the herd known as retail uh, that was long overdue. The weak have basically all experienced this opportunistic infection called Amazon, and it is clearing out the weak and the elderly in retail. Absolutely. 
And people are asking the question, if we don't break up Amazon now, it's going to get too big. It's going to be everything to everybody, and it's only going to be one company, and it's going to be too big. And, oh, no, retail is not as dead as people think. It's the way that retail was done in the past, and like everything else, it's not evolved. And the ones who have, they'll be fine. Rumors of the death of retail have been greatly exaggerated, and we've seen an incredible pop in the retailers that have survived. And this is some of the year-on-year stock performance of some iconic names. But in general, most retailers that have survived are up anywhere between 20 and 50 percent their stocks in the last 12 months. No, but wait, I thought they were all going to die. No, they're not. Sears. It's a dying business. We just talked about last week the fact that they're talking about bringing, uh, you know, Toys R Us back. And I said, if I'm bringing Toys R Us back, what I'm doing is uh, I'm I'm doing a deal with Wish, with Walmart, with a few other. Like, could you imagine going into a Walmart store and just having the toy section be a Toys R Us section, right? Something like that. Doing something like that, and then coming back to malls only during Christmas time. Like they have the Halloween superstores and the spirit stores for 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 six or eight weeks and then being done with it, it is it's easy to do. But if you don't evolve, you're going to pay the price, and Amazon's going to own you. Take L Brands, Adidas, American Eagle, VF, The Gap, PVH, Ralph Lauren, Fast Retailing, Urban Outfitters, Lululemon, Nike, TJX, and just add that. And you have what Amazon has done in the last 12 months. Add all of these iconic CPG firms. Again, not what Amazon has increased in the last 12 months. And finally, you get the point. Add every luxury brand in the world. And you get what Amazon's added in the last 12 months. Think about that. Basically, you take up every single business on earth, retail, small retail, big retail, big box, and you put everything together minus probably a few of like the Walmarts and the Targets and stuff. But uh, you're not going to get what Amazon's done. That's how big they are. Should we break them up? No, I don't think so. People are going to try, though. They're going to try. And we're a consumer-based society. Stock them deep and sell them cheap, baby. 323-538-2423. 323-538-CHAD. Love hearing from you. Text the program. You can tweet at me directly. I try to get back to everybody. Poll question of the day. Should there be a third party? Could you vote for a third party? Could you get behind a third party? Let us know. On the old Twitter, it's the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. Oh, kids, I want everybody to take a deep breath. You ready for this? Hold on to your hats and glasses. This here is the wildest ride in the wilderness. It was a bizarre scene in the Oval Office. President Trump sitting at the Resolute desk. Seated across from him, rap artist Kanye West wearing a red Make America Great Again hat. It was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. You made a Superman. That was, that's my favorite superhero. Stop and frisk does not help the relationship. We can do it a different way, Kanye. I'm totally up. We have to release the love. Uh, the liberal would try to control a black person through the concept of racism. I love this guy right here. If he don't look good, we don't look good. He might not have expected to have a crazy mother like Kanye West. I'll tell you what, that was pretty impressive. <laughs> I love this guy right that's here. Really nice. yes. yeah. That's really nice. And that's from the heart. I didn't want to put you in that position. You know, but... But that's from the heart. Special guy. Crazy. I mean, it was crazy. Here is a guy that is uh, arguably in the last uh, decade and a half or so, one of the most influential music people. At the same time, he's done stuff like get on stage and tell the world that George Bush hates black people. He's gone on stage to take numerous awards from Taylor Swift away. (laughs) He's done all kinds of stuff. And over the last several months, his 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 love, admiration, his his, they've got this weird bromance, and there he is today with you know, the former uh, great uh, football player Jim Brown in the Oval Office, and you know how their egos got into the same room together. I think it's one of the reasons they like each other. I think they look at each other and they see similarities. Trump 
And this is what I don't think people get. It goes with Kim Jong-un, right? And it goes with a lot of these people he sees, you know, people are dictators, this, that, and the other. Trump gets them, not because they're evil, bad people, partly because he understands their ego, because his ego is that big. That's a big point of it. He gets that, right? Does he like the fact that these people are brutal dictators and awful people? No, he doesn't. But he gets them because... He's got a big ego, and they got big egos. They all have this kind of narcissistic God complex, and Kanye's no different than that. But Kanye was, you know what, he was out doing his things. He said some stuff that was extremely interesting today. Whether you like him or not doesn't make the things that he said lies. Doesn't make it not true. When we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. Yeah. Interesting, right? Interesting what he said. I get what he was trying to do, talking about the fact that the rules, the regulations were driving companies out and people are doing stuff illegally and stuff. He got some of it wrong, but I liked where he was going with that. I did. I like where he was going with that. I, I love what he had to say here. What I need Saturday Night Live to improve on or what I need the liberals to improve on is if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. That's, true. <laughs> That's I just love at the end. That's true. He's right. He's not lying. That's true. And I've said for a long time, wanting your president to fail. But we live in this weird two-party system where we need the other side to fail so uh, this side can succeed. And I I hate that. And the fact that uh, it's, it's so frustrating, you know, that we want the other side to fail. People always say, Chad, so you would have supported Hillary. Yeah, I would have supported some of the stuff she did. Absolutely. Would I have supported everything? No, I don't support everything Trump does. And if she did stuff that drove me crazy, I'd be like, oh, God, that drives me crazy. That was awful. Why are you doing it? If she did stuff that was good, I would say, hey, it's good. I wouldn't want her to fail. That doesn't do anybody any good. People only see it, well, they could have the court. They could have this. I look at stuff. You're looking at a micro. I'm looking at a macro. I don't want any of my politicians to be giant failures. I don't want any of them to let down their constituents in our country. And if you want that to happen, that says a lot about you. But we have got this crazy division in this world that is just, it is ugly. And it is getting uglier. And I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think many of you are. You know, that was our question today is, could you really support a third party? There's a lot of lip service. Somebody uh, just tweeted, uh, other parties already exist, Libertarian and Green parties. Though, to me, they're not parties, right? The Green Party is is weak at best. The Libertarian Party, while I like some of the ideas, the reality is the Libertarian Party always seems to attract uh, just the, the McAfee's of the world or the Gary Johnson's, right? Like Gary Johnson, let's let's just throw it out there right now. He was awful. He was. He was awful. I liked a lot of what he had to say. I couldn't get behind him. And I, I, he, he just wasn't. There was nothing about him that says, oh, got to vote for that guy. But today, Kanye was interesting. And he said a lot of stuff. And, and, and what I see is uh, the left, again, who loved him when he hammered Bush, hates him now because he's and, – and, and what they're trying to do is they come down sides. He's crazy. He's nuts. Yeah, he may be. I mean, I'm not going to say he's all there, right? Like as far as – I just think he's got a lot of ideas. He's got a lot of things. He's aloof. He's wacky. Remember, and, I, and, and this is always – when you're poor, you're insane. When you're rich, you're just kind of aloof. He talked about, you know, what was it? He talked about having bipolar, but also at the same time, he's a genius like him, Tesla, and 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 a few other people that like could understand because he tests in the 98th percentile, things like that. He said a lot of stuff. It was, it was, it was, it was surreal to watch. It was absolutely surreal to watch. I mean, it was. It, they talked about Chicago. The numbers of people being shot and killed and it's it's not it's not for this country 
So they have to do something. And I am totally open. If we could do it a different way, Kanye, I'm totally open. Yeah, they talk, you know, they talked about, you know, stop and frisk and all of these things. They talk about all of this stuff. And it was very interesting. Jim Brown, who was there, who was, you know, again, he's had his issues, but he's been a, a, a you know, a person who he said, look, the president invited me to come because they were asking him questions like, how do you think that the NFL is going to look at you? How do you think that that that, that African-Americans will look at you? And he said, you know what? I respect the office. They invited me to come. He invited me to come. He gave me a platform to come here and sit down and talk. And that's what I decided to do. And they asked Jim Brown about, you know, what do you think of uh, kneeling? He says, I won't, you know, I, I don't like it. I don't think it's right. I think that we're a family and we need to take care of things in-house. And doing that is a disrespect to the flag. And America, to me, is a big family. He said some stuff that was very, very interesting. And at the end of it all, after his tirade of craziness and the stuff that he does, because he is Kanye, you know, including, I did he say he wanted to invent a car? Or he already invented a car, producer Phil. I can't remember. It was a hydrogen-powered plane. That's right. That's right. Right. You called it the Yeezy or something like that? (laughs) Yeezy Air. Yeezy Air. After all of this stuff, it ends in a hug. I love this guy right here. That's really nice. Yeah. Amen. Yes. That's really nice. And that's from the heart. I didn't want to put you in that position. But but that's from the heart. Special guy. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it was it was a surreal moment. But take all of that. Take all of the craziness away. Take all of the, you know, the, the, the cameras and just to step back for a second and say, OK, here's a guy who gets called a racist every five minutes. Trump. Right. Who half the country hates. Who. If you look at black unemployment, look Hispanic unemployment. It's down tremendously. Unemployment itself is. You look at the world we live in. Are we safer today than we were, say, a couple years ago? Yeah. Right? Who I hear all the time is just his dog whistle for, for, for the racist and all these kind of things. And he brings these two guys in, into the White House and sits down and has a conversation. That's tough. Look, do I agree with everything that Trump does? Absolutely not. There are times that he's frustrating and... And in the stuff he does really is divisive, even though he may not think it's divisive. And even though he's playing to his crowd and his audience, uh, I don't think all of them get it at times. But he does things unconventionally. And at times they, they fall flat. And at other times they work. And this is one of those weird, surreal moments where they were talking about a lot of stuff. And just because you think they're both kind of crazy doesn't mean that the things that they were saying and talking about didn't need to be addressed. And and, and some of them weren't true. Again, it's a real day. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. On top of that, the the entire, with all of this stuff going on, Michael, and not Myers, but uh, the, her, uh, the hurricane was just parts of the Florida panhandle are never, ever, ever going to be the same. The damage this morning, as we have walked now almost 20 blocks, is never ending. People's belongings, boats on top of homes, uh, roofs that are wedged into condo buildings, and it goes inland. It doesn't just stop right at the coast. Yeah, I mean, uh, they're, 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 if you look at just the pictures... How only six people have died is amazing, but it looks like Hiroshima, but in color. And it looks like what happened in in, in Indonesia and Thailand during the tsunami. It looks like what happened in Japan during their tsunami and earthquake. It, it, It looks devastating. It is devastating. And that place is never going to be the same. And it's going to take a long time, a very long time and there's going to be a lot of people displaced, and there may be people that never, ever, ever, ever go back there again. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love to hear from you. AMAC, I'm working with them. If you don't know who they are, you're about to. I want you to write this down, amac.us forward slash Chad. It's a free one-year membership for you. If you don't know who AMAC is, they're Association of Mature American Citizens. They go out and they do things like lobbying on your behalf, uh, to all the politicians saying, look, you know what? We're sick and tired of Obamacare. I want you to, you know, repeal and replace it with something better. We want you to get 
immigration sorted out in a way that is common sense and real that actually works. We want you to work for us. And they do it in a way that is not like the left leaning ARP. They're amazing. Their benefits are incredible. Movie tickets, 40 percent off movie tickets. That that alone is worth it. And it's free, by the way. Secondly, retail, restaurant, hotel travel discounts, plenty of them, more than you can even know. 40 percent off Disneyland, Disney World, SeaWorld, Legoland, Six Flags. That's just to name a few. And if you're dealing with Medicaid and, and Medicare and all these things, you're dealing with all this, you can have your own personal person to help you navigate through some of these waters as you sign up and do stuff like that. That's what makes them so amazing. Join today if you're over the age of 50 for absolutely nothing. It's free. They don't want your credit card. Go to amac.us forward slash Chad, amac.us forward slash Chad, or call 888-355-1668. That's 888-355-1668 or online at amac.us forward slash chat. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. Melania Trump speaking. Very interesting. Chad Benson Show. Darn, that climate change. Batten down the hatches. It's Topical Storm Chad, headed your way. The one who has the most control over Donald Trump is Melania, 100%. Is that true? Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I give him my honest advice and honest opinions, and uh, then he does what he wants to do. Yeah, it's very interesting. I think it's on tomorrow night is the interview, uh, and uh, she's really open in this, by the way. She is... Uh, uh, say what you want about Trump and the Trumps. As far as transparency for some of this stuff, you know, they give interviews to just about anybody. There is no, like, check yourself, Melania. She just goes off and she talks about all kinds of stuff. Sources have told us, sources in the White House, that you are the gatekeeper, that you tell them who you can trust and who we can't trust. Is that true? Yes, I give him my honest advice. He's been in office now almost two years. Has he had people that you didn't trust working for him? Yes. Did you let him know? I let him know. And what did he do? Uh, Well, some people, they don't work there anymore. Yeah, yeah. By the sounds of it, she said, hey, get them out of here. And, you know, she talked about uh, a lot of different things. And she's opened up, I guess, very honest about the infidelity and the whole nine yards. She talks about the Me Too movement. Think of your son. Think of your husband. Think I've had many false accusations. What is your take about the Me Too movement, though? Do you believe in them? Do you support the Me Too movement? I support the women, and they need to be heard. We need to support them. And, you know, also men, not just women. Yeah, very interesting, right? And she says this weird thing. It, it starts with an E. We need to have a really hard evidence that, you know... That if you accuse of something, show the evidence. Some women might hear that and say, "How could you say that, Mrs. Trump? You, you need to stand with women." What would you I say? I do stand with women, but we need to we need to show the evidence. You cannot just say to somebody, "I was, you know, sexually assaulted," and or you did that to me, or because sometimes the media goes too far. It's not right. Oh evidence god evidence why would you want evidence i like the way he asked like why would you say that why would you want evidence like that's the question he fired back at right but this is the this is right now one of the things that people are talking about is she's talking about you know bullying's kind of her big thing i could say i'm the most bully person on on the world you think you're the most bullied person on one, the world. one of them if you really see what people are saying about me. You're an adult. You say you're strong. Have you thought about what would this do to a child, to my son, to other children? That's why, you know, my Be Best initiative is focusing on um, social media and online behavior. We need to educate the children of uh, social emotional behavior so when they grow up, they know how to deal with, with those issues. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. And she's uh, apparently she's just they, they were surprised, I guess, ABC, that that 
because she's on that trip of Africa, and they were surprised at the kind of access they had, you know, to to ask questions, and it is very interesting to 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 see how this is going to play itself out because apparently she's very open and honest about the infidelity and all of these things. So we'll see. I guess that's on tomorrow night, I believe, on ABC three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Oh, civility in this country. Can we be civil anymore? Hillary, I don't think, really cares for civility. Says that they're not going to be civil until they get power back. But can we be civil? I think we can. I really do. But it takes uh, it takes an effort. Talk about that straight ahead. Chad Benson, Joe. The Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's why I believe if we are fortunate enough to win back the House and or the Senate, that's when civility can start again. But until then, the only thing that the Republicans seem to recognize and respect is strength. That was Hillary Clinton the other day talking about how you can't be civil. We, you know, the Republicans are, 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 you know, you just can't be, be civil at all. There's no way you can be civil, period, case closed, end of stories with the Republicans because they are, they're not civil. None of them at all are, are, are civil. Right. And you could show charts about how people, you know, when you look at the hate, how the hate since Reagan, Democrats have hated Republicans since Reagan and how they've far they've looked at the other side as evil. And only the last two years has it got to the point where Republicans have said, you know, if you think we're evil, then maybe you're evil and it's on, which is not a good thing. That's not a way to to improve dialogue or help the country when you look at the other side. And first of all, there is another side. And secondly, you don't even look at them anymore because we're so tribal as people. You look at them as evil, and that isn't good. Michelle always says, Michelle Obama, I love her, you know, but Michelle always says that, you know, when they go low, we go high. No, no. When they go low, we kick them. Uh, So that's what happens. So now that's that's just it. That's kick them, because Michelle Obama says stuff like that. No, our motto is... When they go low, we go high. Yeah, you remember that, right? Yeah, that's like you said. That's what you know. That's what Michelle says. That's what Michelle says. But this is a new Democratic Party, a Democratic Party that wants to get in your face, a Democratic Party that realizes now you got to be loud, you got to be in your face, you got to attack them, you can't give it up. Maxine Waters, you go to their homes, you do what you do, you you you, you have to do whatever it is you do because in the end, the ends justify the means. That's what this new Democratic Party is about. We're proud as hell to be Democrats. We're willing to fight for the ideals of the Democratic Party. There you go. That's fine. I got no I I got no problem with fighting for the ideas of that. Right? None. But if your idea is, you know what, we're just basically gonna run and kick you in the uh, uh and that's our new thing. That that to me is an issue. That's not civility that we need. That's not. I don't like it when Republicans go low. I think it's ridiculous. And I'm going to say the same thing about the Democrats. When you're going to go low and this is what you want, what does this say to everybody else? Right? What does this say to everybody else? I want some civility back in there. We're not always going to agree on stuff. Not always. Sometimes we will. Sometimes we're going to find real common ground on things that are going to be good for everybody. And in fact, in many ways, there's a lot of things that we want to do in politics that both sides agree on. The problem is the process. What's the process to get us to this point? 
But now, when we stop looking at each other as you're just a person that has different beliefs, but instead you look over and say, you're the enemy, that doesn't help any conversation. When I hear Holder making a statement like he made today, I think it's a disgrace. And Hillary, she just doesn't get it. She never did. She never will. And that's why she lost the election. Well, he's right about that. She doesn't get it. But it is a disgrace to say something like that. You're the former attorney general and you're holding. Let's go low. It's that old uh, God was the Untouchables movie. You know, when they put one of them in the hospital, you put one of them in the morgue. It's that kind of attitude that they think that they should uh go after and 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 to me i i hear more and more of it they ratcheted up this past this entire fight with kavanaugh was a ratcheted up thing where you could see it where we lost the civil the civility amongst each other to have conversations to have even a conversation about something now everything is a debate everything is a fight you show up ready to fight and I, i i didn't like that and i don't like that I don't think that does us any good. You know, Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. Here's my view of the Democratic Party regarding Kavanaugh. Going low is a step up for you. You are in the gutter. (laughs) I don't know if that's right either, but I get what he's trying to do. But Mr. Holder, you're not even saying let's pretend to go high. You're not even saying let's get on the moral high ground. You're saying let's throw down. You want to get dirty? Huh? Let's get dirty. You You brought a knife to a gunfight. Uh, Keep it up. Keep it up, Mr. Holder. Keep saying that you're going to, you know, you keep doing what you're doing. See how the American people like this. This is the number one issue, I think, for America in November. Do you agree with what they did to Brett Kavanaugh? Do you believe that what they did was okay? If you believe it was okay, vote Democrat. If you thought it was despicable, vote for us. Yeah, or better yet, maybe step back and say, I'm not quite sure I want to vote for anybody based on the way that I see these attitudes that are coming out here. And I find it to be ridiculous. I do. I find it absolutely to be ridiculous. And we're getting more and more and more and more and more. And we're hearing things more and more from from Democrats like the Maxine Wass, like the Cory Bookers. Go to the Hill today. Get up and please get up in the face of some Congress people. When people like Cory Booker say get up in their face, he, he may think that that's OK. But what he doesn't realize is that for about every thousand person that might want to get up in your face, One of them is going to be unstable enough to commit violence. He's right. This is coming from a guy who was attacked by his neighbor, right? He was attacked by his neighbor. And also, there was that incident at the baseball game. You remember that? The guy shooting up the ball field and shooting, I think five or six people were were shot. (laughs) These police was almost killed. He was yelling, this is for health care. He had a list in his pocket of conservative Republicans that he wanted to kill. These are people that are unstable. We don't want to encourage them. We have to somehow ratchet it down and say we're not encouraging that violence is ever okay, ever a reason for or a means for trying to resolve things. No, it's not. But that is, I think, what we're headed to. And Rand Paul's right. Both sides need to take it down a notch. I'm looking at the Republicans. I'm looking at the Democrats. We've got to have some civility and the fight that they think they're taking on. You understand, for a lot of them, and we've talked about this before here, which is you go on these shows and you you scream and you yell at each other. And in the back uh, green room there, you talk about, hey, what are you doing this weekend? How's your kids? You know, the whole nine yards. The problem is not everybody buys into that. A lot of them, they take it seriously. A lot of them look at this WWE Shakespearean kind of theater that's going on in politics and they buy into it and they take it seriously. And I'm starting to think that more and more of these people, and I'm not talking about the the average person, I'm talking about more of the more of the people that represent us are starting to drink their own Kool-Aid and are more than just rabble rousing their bases, that they're starting to believe some of this stuff. And what is it going to take for us to step back and go, okay, wait a minute, this has gone too far? I feel that there's going to be an assassination. I really worry that someone is going to be killed and uh, that those who are ratcheting up the conversation, those who are ratcheting up saying get in their face, they have to realize that they bear some responsibility if this elevates to violence. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Let's just say for the sake of argument, right? That somebody goes out and does something from either side of the aisle that says something that that energizes enough people that they go out and they do something, right? They kill somebody. Do you think at any point in time that 
any of these people are going to look and go, you know what, maybe, 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 maybe this is a little too much. Maybe, maybe we need to step this thing back. I don't know if it's going to happen that way. You know, one of the things I said is when I watched that whole thing with Jeff Flake and, and several of these other senators and stuff with people coming up and screaming and getting into their faces, I thought to myself, didn't we just have an issue with Scalise and the shooting? And it just seemed way too easy for somebody to walk up to some of these people in the anger that they had. And it's a very interesting situation. But civility, we need more of it. And I don't think we have it. And I think some of the stuff that I talk about uh, with people is they are worried about the tribalism of this country. They are worried about the way that the country is headed. They are worried about how we're talking to one another. They're worried that the tools that we have that should be fun and enjoyable have now become tools where we can go after each other. Twitter, Facebook, all of these things say horrible, horrible things to each other with zero accountability and zero worry for anybody coming after you. And that, to me, is not good. It's not. This mob mentality and mob rule is not good for anybody. And it's sure in hell not good for the next generation. But I agree with him. I think somebody's going to pay the price, the ultimate price. Somebody is going to be so pissed, so angry, so enraged by something. And the fires are going to be stoked. To the point that they act on something and that they do something and that they kill a politician. And we're like, wow. But it shouldn't be a surprise. It shouldn't. Based on all the things we're seeing and hearing, I doubt it's a surprise to anybody. And I doubt it will be. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. I love hearing from you. A lot of stuff uh, still to touch on. And again, we're watching, you know, the, the hurricane is is absolutely devastating. Uh, but one of the things I'm marveling and continue to marvel at is, first of all, one of the things you're going to see is, is, is how fast they try to build this thing back up. But the reality of, 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 of how bad this is and the damage when you see it on television. And you look at it and the debris and, and just, it is, it is, it's Hiroshima. It is, there is nothing left in, in Mexico beach and, and in certain parts of, of certain areas, there is very little left. I mean, it's just Panama beach, it just eviscerated. Yet when you look, oh, how good a, the first responders are B how smart people are, you know, with technology and everything. In front of us, it's great. It really is great that we can do something like this and and escape something like this with very minimal loss of human life. That that to me is amazing. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Netflix is an addiction. Yeah, that's right. It's an addiction. Are you addicted to Netflix? You can text the program, 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. We've also got a poll question up today, and that poll question is interesting. Could you support a third party? I think it's time that we have a real third party in this country. I think it's time, and I think there's enough support out there as independents are becoming the biggest growing voter base out there. And I think it's time that the that third party comes along and speaks to to a lot of people. Could you support a third party? Text the program 323-538-2423. It's the Chad Benson Show. Running with scissors sounds great compared to this. Say woo! There's a menace inside our homes, spreading throughout our communities. It's taking away people's lives. Addiction to Netflix. I've lost my whole life. Why'd you do it? I have to find out who's going to be emotionally transformed on the next Queer Eye. <laughs> what Now, look, there is an issue, and addiction to Netflix is a very real, real thing. Okay? Just want you guys to understand that. One facility is trying to change that. I'm here at the Netflix Rehabilitation Center to meet those worst affected. Uh, Now, we all know why you're here, and it's because you're using 
uh, a video streaming platform as an emotional crutch, subsequently leading to uh, uh, antisocial behaviour. Patients begin their journey by admitting they have a problem. I'm Ari. Hi, Ari. I uh, watched seven seasons of Suits in two weeks, and I don't know where my family is. <laughs> You guys get this as a joke, right? But it's not a joke. That's a parody. There's not. The reality is, is addicts are actually checking in in several countries because of their addiction to Netflix. Wyatt has been here two weeks and has lost his job due to his addiction. Well, I got home from work on Friday and then I started mainlining the crown. <laughs> Next thing I know, it's Monday and the boss is calling saying, why am I at work? I mean, the autoplay, it just keeps playing episode after episode. <laughs> He's mainlining the crowd. Why do you think people use Netflix? Well, they're just trying to chase the thrill they got from the first episode of Stranger Things. Sad, really. Can you tell me a little bit about the method you use to treat people? Uh, well, it's nothing you wouldn't see outside of Guantanamo Bay. Obviously, we use restraint. Four new movies that have just come out. They weren't good enough for cinematic release. No, you no, can't no, see no. the video rolls. Aaron Roberts is in all of them! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my. Yeah, there are issues, though. Because you know what? You can get lost, right? Every one of you who has Netflix knows this. You're like, I'll watch one episode. It's like taking a chip, right? If it's good, like if, if people say you just can't eat one. That's with any chip in the world except chips that suck, right? Last night I went home and there was a bag of Doritos. And I'm like, oh, I'm kind of hungry. I've worked out. I haven't eaten. I'm going to take a quick bite before I, 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 you know, dinner. And that quick bite is like not just one because Doritos are great. Netflix is the same way. If you find a show that is good, you'll watch the hell out of it. I did that. The And, and I'm if you guys listen to the show regularly, you guys know I'm not a huge fan of, of watching TV. I don't watch a ton of it. Uh, I, I I like like gun smokes, like my favorite show and things like that. And I watch, you know, documentaries. I've rarely even watched the news because kind of what I do as far as like at home, I watch it here and I'm always up on stuff. But I will tell you, Pinky Blinders, I fell in love with Pinky Blinders and I watched it like it was one night, it was a Friday night. I'm like, I'll watch one episode. This looks interesting, right? I like Silly and Murphy. And the next thing you know, it's it, at 10 o'clock, it's 3 in the morning, and I'm on episode, like, number 6, and I'm like, I can't stop watching this. It's amazing. It is amazing. It is. Speaking of amazing, they lived. Six, five, four. The launch of the Soyuz rocket from Kazakhstan seemed picture perfect. Lift off. And there is lift off. Of Astronaut Nick Haig and cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin were 28 miles up when... 11.42 is the time of the failure. The spacecraft went into a dive and its parachute deployed. NASA reported... The crew is in communications with the rescue forces and are in good condition. The Russians are likely to ground the Soyuz program during the investigation of today's incident. It's the only way to get people to and from the space station where a German, a Russian, and an American are currently at work. Yeah, so that's interesting. And 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 Phil being the nerd of space, uh, seven Gs is what they re-entered. I guess the atmosphere came back down. What is that like? Explain that. What would that would be to people? It's harsh. <laughs> like, that's like crushing your organs and stuff, it's, it's right? It's pretty close, too. Oh, God, I couldn't imagine. They're, they're both fine. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen from here. My thing is, like, were you supposed to bring anybody back? <laughs> it's like, dude, I've been up here a long time, and I've had about as much as I can have of being up here. It's time for me to come home. And now you're like, hey, we got a problem. There's going to be a delay. How long? A long time. Remember those guys that were supposed to come? Yeah, they crashed it. Oh. 323-538-2423. At Jeff Benson Show is your Twitter. Please take the Twitter poll. Do you think there should be a viable third party? Would you be in favor of that? Like Chad Benson Show on the old Facebook. Check out the YouTube, Chad Benson Show TV. Check out the YouTube. Please do. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show.
independent in thought, and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. The damage this morning, as we have blocked now almost 20 blocks, is never ending. People's belongings, boats on top of homes, uh, roofs that are wedged into condo buildings, and it goes inland. It doesn't just stop right at the coast. No, it doesn't. And it is, I, you know what, looking at this, and if you've not seen any of the pictures of what took place in at, at uh, Mexico Beach and, you know, Panama and uh, Beach down in Florida, if you've not seen the devastation, it is, it is ferocious. I mean, it is absolutely just beyond devastating there is nothing left there is absolutely nothing left of these cities it is it looks like i I was just talking to somebody who's there who uh listens to my national show and said that you know we didn't stick around uh but we have before in the past but we knew this one was bigger and it is there people aren't going to be coming back to anything there's nothing to come back to this was Massive. This hurricane was an absolute monster, and the damage left in its wake is still yet to be fully understood. Yeah, and it's not going to be fully understood for a very, very, very long time. It is just wow. That's the the only way you can say in a situation. You look at this, you're like, there is nothing left, nothing, not a thing left. This was just a beast, Michael, that moved through. And in its wake, it left devastation and, and like you couldn't believe. But when you look at the number of people that are dead, that is the thing where you step back and go, wow, for all. If you were just seeing pictures of this, so you're just seeing pictures of what took place here. You didn't know any of the story. You knew nothing other than here's a picture of this. How many th- people do you think died? And you're like, a couple thousand? 20,000? So far, I believe it's one. 1,000? One. Just one. That is is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And it is going to be a long time. And I don't, you know, if you're coming back, this is one of those things where you're coming back to this, you have no idea what you're coming back to, but you're seeing stuff. Some people, st- they, 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 they stuck it out. They, they stuck around. But other people... They're coming back. They have no idea what they're coming back to. And there's nothing. You're sifting through nothing. If you can even find parts of it. There are are literally massive boats inland sitting on top of people's destroyed homes. And that right there just is, is just absolutely insane. We will do everything that we can to set up triage centers. Uh, in those areas where our hospitals are out of commission, uh, and we will work with our partners at HHS to stay on top of that, as as well as uh, you know the governor and his staff as well. So we continue to uh, focus on that area. Yeah, yeah, and uh, as, as that panhandle has taken a beating, but for all intents and purposes, when we step back and look at this, the reality of the fact that there isn't massive amounts of death is is amazing it is it is really amazing it is three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show us your twitter you could tweet at us i do love hearing from you talking about civility throughout the day and and you know some of the things i think we need to do and 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 is we need to push forward as a nation and start demanding that our leaders start to act in an appropriate way We've heard, you know, everything from, yes, uh, kids, I'm going to say it from, you know, we're going to we're going to go low. Right. Like, that's what Eric Holder came out and said, you know, and and, and he said, you know, no, no offense to Michelle Obama, but, you know, we're not going to go high anymore when they go low. We're just going to go low. And this is the new Democratic Party. And and I just sit back and I'm thinking, how do we get to the point where we can start having civil dialogue? Because why should anybody want to have civil dialogue with anybody if you're looking at the people that are supposed to be your leaders, right? And they're supposed to be the ones who are setting the example and the tone, and there's no tone anymore. 
And the question is, is are we setting the tone or are they setting the tone? And they're just, and we're following them or are they following us? Right? Uh, who's following who? That's a very good question. Who's following who it, at this moment in time? I wonder that. I do. I wonder. Are they taking their cue from us? Because they're looking out there and saying, wow, look at this. Look at look, look at what's going on there. And and I think, and here's the other thing, too. Part of it is is our tribalism, right? Our tribalism that we have right now, where it's the red versus the blues, right? It's the right versus the left. It's a conservative versus the progressives. This, this, the, the social justice warriors are out there. You've got the alt-right crazies that are out there. You've got all of these things that are going on out there. And I think in many ways, politicians are taking a bit of a cue from us. And they're afraid. They're afraid because social media has now given everybody a voice and where they may want to reach across the aisle, the fear is me reaching across the aisle isn't going to look good. Me reaching across the aisle isn't going to be good for anybody. Me reaching across for, and my party, because even though we've got a bill that we want to put together, even though we've got something here, because you voted yes for Kavanaugh or no for Kavanaugh, for this, that, and the other, me seeing to work with you is 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 conspiring with the enemy, and that isn't good at all. It isn't. It's not good at all. And we've got this situation where you've got people like Eric Holder coming out and saying... Michelle always says, Michelle Obama, I love her, you know, but Michelle always says that, you know, when they go low, we go high. No, no. When they go low, we kick them. You know what's even more disturbing? People are clapping for that. Like, oh, yeah, that's right. That's what we do. That is exactly what we do. That, to me, is 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 just as sad as saying that and i found it to be you know i didn't like the you know people are texting in and saying you know what about this you know what i didn't like it jan brew perfect example and she waved her finger in front of president trump's face when she was on the tarmac i didn't like that i think there's a better way to handle that i think there's better ways to handle certain situations that we've had and the way that we've treated each other but i also think that we are now painting politicians into a corner that we're not going to allow them the opportunity to be civil anymore to one another because the fear is if you do something we're going to primary the hell out of you we'll take you out if you don't do our bidding this group here i mean susan collins gave an impassioned thoughtful speech last friday about kavanaugh and why she was going to vote for kavanaugh and she was destroyed for it, right? She was absolutely just destroyed for it. And that was by the other side. Joe Manchin voted, said, I'm going to go with Kavanaugh. And people are on his side of the aisle, if you will, are donating money to the other side, even though they can't stand it because they feel like you have to pay the price now for going against even your own kind. And that is insane. That doesn't help anybody. That doesn't push any conversation forward. And I like civility. I like conversations. I don't know when we, we – I think conversations and debate is a totally lost art form. It is a totally lost art form. Sitting down and talking to people has become a lost art form of just being able to have a conversation with one another that doesn't end up in people screaming at one another. But I, I think the question is is, is – is, are they taking their cues from us? Or are we taking their cues from them? And I think in a lot of ways, they're taking it from us. And they're afraid. They're just as afraid of their constituents that voted them in anymore as they are the other side that will vote against them. Because they know how vicious their side could be. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter tweet at us love hearing from you kanye had lunch today he's always interesting right like I, um, kanye's kanye right i like kanye 
in the fact that I think he's hilarious and he's crazy. And he does things that are, you know, I mean, from the Taylor Swift jumping on stage to doing those kind of things to George Bush. Hayes, I've always thought, well, you know, he, he's definitely a guy that dances to the beat of his own drum. He does his own thing. He is he is interesting. And I like interesting people. Right? don't have to agree with him. Don't know what his motivation is. Maybe it's real motivation. Maybe he loves Trump. I think part of the reason they like each other is because I think they get each other more so than other people get them. But he was at the White House today, and he was just being Kanye. What I need Saturday Night Live to improve on and what I need the liberals to improve on is if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. It's true. Yeah, and that's something I've been saying. The fact that we've got a two-party system where we're hoping and praying that the other party fails rather than saying, well, our ideas are better. Let us show you how it works. Rather than saying, I hope he fails. I hope they fail. And it's it, the reality is, is I don't ever want any of my presidents to fail. If Hillary would have been president, I criticize Trump and I will continue to do so. And when Trump does good things, I will praise him. If Hillary would have done great things, I'd have praised her. If she'd have done bad things, I would have said that's not good. It's not. But the want for our president to fail, I find that to be the most un-American thing. I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. It is absolutely insane that we're at this point where we hope the other side fails. Not because we think our ideas are better. Because I think a lot of times your ideas are just their ideas. Rarely do we get to see them in in full force. And nobody has a monopoly on good or bad ideas, either of these parties. But we just feel it's an easier route for us to get power is if you fail. 323-538-2423 Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Bomb fell. Chad, you you sound good. Do you look good? I do look good. Tomorrow I'm gonna unveil my newest outfit I got from Bomb Fell. You guys are gonna be like, ooh, look at you. You looking good. What is Bomb Fell, fellas? Let me tell you what it is. Guys, can we be honest just for a second? We like to look good because we like when people think, hey, you look good, right? You 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 look good. And it makes us feel good. But we hate shopping. And now there is a way for us to look good and not have to shop the old-fashioned way. It's called Bombfell. It's the easiest way to get the best-looking clothes. And, again, no shopping required. First, what they do is you get a, a, a dedicated personal stylist. My guy's named Michael, right? He goes through. They have the best brands around. They're going to look at your taste. Uh, they're going to get your measurements, your fit, the whole nine yards. And then they're going to send stuff out to you. You pay for only what you keep. When you buy multiple things, you get 20% off. It is amazing. And if you know this, guys, and I tell you what, I because I, I wear a lot of T-shirts and stuff like that. It's radio. It's one of the beauties about being on radio, but I'm appearing more and more on TV and doing more and more stuff in front of the camera. you you got to look good. And when you put on a piece of clothing that's real, that's good, that, that, that you know like this is made well, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like it. So check it out for yourself. Thousands of men across America are talking about it. They're wearing it. They're trying it. They're loving it. Go to Bombfell today. Bombfell.com. B-O-M-B-F-E-L-L.com. Slash Benson, they're going to give you 25 bucks off your first purchase. You're going to love it, absolutely love it. Take a look, sign up today. You don't have to order anything. You should, but just check it out for yourself. You're going to absolutely love it. Bombfell.com slash Benson. Bombfell.com slash Benson. It's going to save you 25 bucks off your first purchase. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It's the Chad Benson Show. No snowflake zone. Uninformed opinions are in danger of melting. The Chad Benson Show. This is the strongest hurricane to hit Georgia since 18, the 1890s. I mean, that's that's how long it's been since a storm uh, that strong came ashore from the Gulf and then was still at a category two, three strength crossing into Georgia you know, some 50 or so miles inland. If you've not seen the devastation, uh, it is it looks like a nuclear bomb has gone off in some of these uh, Mexico Beach and uh, Panama Beach and several places. It, it it looks like. Nobody survived. It, it is incredible. It is the damage is there is nothing. I, if one of these homes, if some of these people can come back and actually get into their homes, I would be surprised, judging by some of it. Not only the water damage, the wind damage, and how strong the wind was and what it did and the storm surge, 
is absolutely incredible. And uh, it is, it, you just step back and you're like, this is, this is, it, it is, it's what nature will do, man. Nature will mess you up. It will. And nature decided today and yesterday, ah, I don't know if I like the panhandle right now. I'm coming on through. I got places to go. I got things to do. You guys just happen to be in the way. We have 3,500 Florida National Guard with more than 1,000 high water vehicles, 13 helicopters, and 16 boats for humanitarian assistance, security operations, and search and rescue. Yeah. And uh, again, as of now, I think there's only one death that's been attributed that will probably change over the next couple days. But if you just saw the damage and you had no idea what took place, you didn't hear anything about the news, you didn't know anything, they just like, they open up a cave, they move the rock, you come on out, and you're like, hey, what's going on? They showed you this, you're like, God, how many people died? Thousands? Tens of thousands? You're like, so far, one. It's, it is it is really amazing. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Kanye hanging out with the president today. It's just an interesting thing. It's so funny as we talk about civility and Eric Holder saying, you know what, we're going to kick him low. And you've got all of this stuff and how we've become completely uncivil. Here's two guys that uh, they're at times in their own world. But uh, this this was just he dropped the f bomb at one time, and this is uh, this is them towards the end of it. I love this guy right that's here. Really nice. Yeah, come that's, yeah. that's really nice, and that's from the heart. I didn't want to put you in that position, you know, but but that's from the heart. Special guy. And they gave a big hug to each other, and uh, uh, I I don't know what the the meeting was as far as like I don't know what they were, what they were talking about, you know, in general, and like where they thought this was going to go, but. Uh, uh, it's funny to see how many people are texting in Kanye's nuts, Trump is this, and, and I just sit there and laugh and I say, yeah, maybe, yeah, there's some craziness there. Just because they're crazy at times doesn't mean that there's some things they're saying that bear some truth, right? Even a broken clock is right twice a day. So, but it was interesting. Very much so. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Oh, babysitting while black. What? Yeah. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent in thoughts and punk rock in life. It's the Chad Benson Show. When we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. Yeah. Uh, look, uh, he's right about that. Uh, the one thing I will say, you know, is Kanye met with Trump today. They had lunch. And uh, and, and it's in the day when we're talking about civility and the lack of civility with our politicians and with each other and the tribalism, uh, it, it, it is very interesting. But one thing I will say about that is the one thing that people forget when it comes to people make things in the cheapest place possible is because consumers want the cheapest product possible. Rarely do we want to spend more money for something. Sometimes you've got money and you know that there's certain things that you're not going to skimp on, right? You know, there's certain things. It's like, this is what I'm willing to pay for this. I'll pay more for this because I like this. But for a lot of the everyday goods and a lot of other stuff, we're looking for bottom dollar. Right? Stack them deep and sell them cheap. That's what we want. That is exactly what we want. But he is, uh, I'm interested to see how the media, which is going to cover this and the craziness and how people on the left are going to attack him. And I don't know why and what it's all about with him. I don't know what it is. I think some of it is they kind of get each other. Uh, he is, uh, Kanye's always been this kind of person, right? He, he, he does his own thing, goes in his own direction from jumping on stage on numerous occasions to take 
poor Taylor Swift's awards away to whatever it is that he does. He does stuff that is completely different. And uh, he's always been that way. It is what it is. People, he's crazy. He even talked about the fact that he's bipolar and all of this stuff. Talked about his IQ and stuff today. Talked about the hat. There was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. You made a Superman. That was, that's my favorite superhero. There you go. Made him Superman. That's the favorite superhero. So I don't know what's going to come out of this today, but the reality is that I think in a day when we're sitting here talking about civility and we need to talk more and more about civility, that we absolutely have to start thinking to ourselves, how do we start treating each other in a better way? What is it that we do? How can we improve a situation? Is it us that is causing our politicians to follow our lead out of fear of the reaction we may give if they dare talk to the enemy? Or are we following their lead? Are we following them? I don't think so. I think it's as much give and take as it gets because I think there's a lot of people out there that are putting pressure on politicians and just like CEOs of companies are terrified of anything that might come any way that they might get destroyed in social media. I think politicians have gotten to the point where they're terrified of the same thing. So they've got to one up themselves. And I see with the social justice warriors. It's not you just, you just can't be progressive. How progressive are you? Well, you think you're progressive. Well, I'm going to be more progressive and I'm going to be more of this. I'm going to be more of this. And I feel that's a lot of what's going on on with politicians and they're afraid just like ceos and they're going to go out there and 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 say even more things be even more over the top because they think that's why is everybody happy all right good i made everybody happy because they're afraid of 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 being absolutely hammered by the people out there in social media 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. What do you think? So, imagine this. You're a dude, but you happen to be black. You're babysitting a couple kids. Then, next thing you know, a do-gooder out there is suspicious. I'm babysitting, right? Y'all see, look, I got... I got two kids in the back seat with me. I'm babysitting. There's this lady across the street. We just came from Subway and Walmart. This lady over here, she's following me because I got two kids in the back seat that does not look like me. Yeah. His name's Corey Lewis, Georgia. He's got a like a mentoring program that he works with, and two of the kids that he was watching happen to be white. And he happens to be black. And somebody's like, oh. This woman followed them around, I guess, Walmart and stuff. It's just a very bizarre situation. This lady has took it upon herself to say that she's going to take my plate down and call the police. It's crazy. It's it's 2018, and this is what I got to deal with. I can't go out with two kids that do not look like me without something being weird. You see the lady is still not moving. She is harassing me because I have two kids that do not look like me. Yeah, it's very interesting. And in fact, at one time, she in Walmart tried to get the. It's like a like a ten year old boy and a twelve year old girl tried to get the girl's attention. Wanted to talk to her without him there, as if he was holding them hostage. Right, as if he was holding them hostage. And it, and and look, I. We live in a weird world, right, where we want people to see something, say something. Understand that. I do. I understand that. I think, though, when you see the kids laughing and they're out having fun and they're talking and they're at Subway. and I, if, you, look, if you're kidnapping, uh, and like, Producer Phil, it's been a long time since you and I have kidnapped anybody. Uh, would you take, would the first thing you do is take them to Walmart and or Subway to eat fresh? Uh, no. No, 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 I don't think so. I just wanted to get a ruling on that just in case we, you know. But. She thought she should say something, and sure enough, eventually she called the cops. Let's we'll see what the police got to say about this. Apparently, she felt like she saw you at Walmart. I was at Walmart, yeah. I'm babys- I got two kids I'm babysitting. We ate at Subway at Walmart. Went and got some gas. She pulled up talking about some, are the kids ahead. okay? Return. She left, came back, asked to see the little girl so she can ask her if she, does she know who I am. Yeah. And then I went over to get some gas at Murphy's. She came back there and, 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 and stayed there. 
Yeah, and finally the cops go, are you guys fine? And they're like, yeah, we're awesome. This is great. Nothing wrong. And and they called the kid's mom, and the kid's mom's were like, the mom was like, this is a joke, right? You guys are joking. This isn't real. It's... Here's my... Here, here's the thing. If it was two white people, if it was two black kids and a white person, would there have been the same kind of thing? I don't think there would have been. I don't think there would have been. Even though in the day and age of see something, say something, I don't think there would have been. Right? If it was if it was a, a white guy babysitting two Asian kids, would it have been? Or two Hispanic kids, would it have been the same thing? I don't think so. If I was there, and I'm walking around, and I'm all tatted up, and, 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 and I've got... Two kids that were two black kids in you know in the cart and pushing around. And I'm talking to them the whole nine yards, or they're walking besides me and we're talking. And they would have thought, you know, and again, I'm punk rock. I'm tatted up the whole nine yards. They would have thought, oh, he's doing a good thing. And and you could tell like it's when he flips the camera around, you could tell that the kids are like laughing, thinking this is absolutely ridiculous. Baby sitting while black, man, better watch out. It is ridiculous. It is just, uh, just ask the guy, what are you afraid of? That would have been my thing. Hey, are you guys, you know, if, if you're that concerned, just ask the guy. I don't know if she thought he, he, he like mind melted them. Like, ooh, ee, ee. I don't know what she thought. I don't, but it was just, it, it was, it was weird. So be careful when you're babysitting out there and mentoring. I think, I think everybody. Should have a mentor. I, you know, what would be great is if that you got a mentor. You know, we 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 brought more people together and say, look, you know what? Here's a white dude like Chad. He's going to talk to you guys. He's going to hang out with you guys and have fun, and vice versa. I think that'd be great, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be nice? People of color and white people hanging out, Chad. What is wrong with you? Civility? What the hell are you talking about? Enough with this crap. You're insane. Cats and dogs living together. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. I'm still trying to figure this out, but this whole thing with this Saudi journalist is just insane, isn't it? So he he goes into it in Turkey into a Saudi embassy. There's like a hit squad. He's disappeared. Nobody really knows what's going on. Today, Trump comes out and says, look, here's the deal. We got to figure some stuff out to do, but we're not going because I see people going, oh, it's good that Trump will put, you know, uh, money over people's lives. But he comes out today and says, look, it's not even about that. What it's about is if they don't buy him from us, they're going to buy it from somewhere else. And that hundred billion dollars is going to end up going to where? To China, to Russia. But this is a very interesting thing to see this guy just totally disappear and the Senate's asking questions. People are asking questions like, where in God's name is this guy? Why did he disappear? How did he disappear? Is there really a hit squad after him? Because it sure looks like it. Sure kind of look like it. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Poll question today is, would you be open to a third party? And could you vote for a third party? Could you honestly say, I like... It, it, I could vote for you. I could get behind you because I think we need something to start shaking us up. And I think a solid third party would be great. And a solid third party only has to take 10 or 15 percent of the seats for it to make real noise. Text the program 323-538-2423. Dollar Shave Club. I'll tell you a story about Dollar Shave Club. So uh, my beard, I let it get big. And the last time I shaved it. I didn't even take a, uh, like an electric razor and shave it down. I just went through it with the Dollar Shave Club with my executive razor, and it ran through that thing at Dr. Carver's Shave Butter like it was nothing. That's how amazing the razors are. But then you find out they have all of this other stuff. Right now, I smell good. I do. I do. I've got the – because I'm growing my beard out. i got a little bit of beard lotion in there. You're going to love it. You can join today. For five bucks, free shipping after that stuff ships at normal price. What they do is they start you out with a daily essential starter set. So you get a taste, their toothpaste, their toothbrush, all of the stuff they have, their skin cream, everything is amazing. Top shelf ingredients, not going to break your budget. Now is the time to join. This is what you do. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash Chad. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash Chad. It is five 
bucks to join. That's it. You're going to love it. DollarShaveClub.com slash Chad. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Love hearing from you. Tweet us about Kanye. Tweet us about the hurricane. Tweet us about anything. I try to get back to each and every one of you. Medicare. It's got new cards coming out. There's a reason for that. We're actually going to talk to somebody about why new cards are coming about because it's fraud. Oh, yeah, kids. Fraud. Chad Benson Show. Set Chad straight. Text the show. 323-538-2423. That's 323-538-CHAD. Someone has to do it. Might as well be you. The Chad Benson Show. It is that time of the year where people are looking around saying, what are we going to be doing heading into next year? One thing for sure is Medicare. they got cards coming out. Uh, people get confused by this. Uh, it, it can be a very stressful time for people. Joining us now is Dr. Lisa McAdams, Acting Regional Administrator for the Southwest Regional Office of the Centers for Medicare and uh, Medicaid Services. So uh, what's different about these cards here, Doc? So the new Medicare card that people will be receiving in their mail by the end of October um, no longer has their social social security number on it. Uh, people with Medicare will be receiving a brand new number uh, in an effort to help uh, avoid fraud and pr- protect their identity. Is that was that, was that a big issue? Is that's why they're they're switching out of this? Because the fact is, I wouldn't want minus my social security card. I don't know if I want my uh, my social security number on anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's true. It it, it is an issue. Yeah, you know, we've seen a, an increasing uh, number of issues with identity theft. You know, where people take your social security number and use it to open up bank accounts or or credit cards in your name. And so we really want to avoid that for our people with Medicare. Uh, and and one way that we can do that is to get those social security numbers off of their Medicare cards um, and give them a, a brand new number that. That doesn't identify with their social security number at all. Which is, uh, I think, a very good uh, uh, thing. And I know what a lot of people are are asking, and this is something that, because I was talking to somebody about this the other day, because anytime something changes, right, you know, even though it's changing for a reason to protect their identity and things of that nature, the big question is, is... Is this going to change my benefits? How is this going to affect me? Because people, a lot, you know, when you don't have the information, you allow things to run wild in your head. Yeah, it can be confusing, but people with Medicare should understand that their coverage isn't changing, their benefits aren't changing, Um, all that's changing is the number on the card. Um, The card also has a little bit of a different look to it, so they shouldn't be surprised by that. Um, But once they get it, they can take it and use it just like they used their Medicare card before with their doctors and their providers. Which is a, a very good thing. Talking to Dr. Lisa McAdams, uh, she's the acting regional administrator for the Southwest Regional Office of the Centers for uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, so people are going to be receiving this. How many are going out? Because and, and do a lot of people even know about this? Because I think that's part of the problem is when I started talking about this, uh, people didn't quite understand why they were doing this. And again, there's that fear factor of, of trying to figure out why. And some people even thought, oh, this is going to be a fraud. So I'm not going to take this Medicare card. Yeah. Well, in the state of New Mexico, we have 400,000 people with Medicare who will be receiving a new card. Across the country, there are 60 million people with Medicare. And so we've been sending these out in waves. um, And for New Mexico, the wave is now. Uh, So they should be receiving their card by the end of October. Do they need to do anything in particular? So does anybody need to call anything or is this just going to be done on their own and then they could get rid? What do they do with their old cards? There is not anything that they need to do. Um, They don't need to pay anyone. Uh, We won't be calling them. In fact, Medicare will never call uh, unsolicited people with Medicare. Um, So if they do get one of those calls, they should call our 1-800-MEDICARE number um, and report that immediately because that's fraud. Um, And then once they get their new card, they should destroy the old one, that old one that has the Social Security number on it. Um, And when I say destroy, I mean cut it up into little bitty pieces, shred it, burn it, something that makes it impossible for somebody to see that Medicare number, that old Social Security number on there any longer. 
You know, that, again, that's it's in this day and age with the whole Social Security thing and having your number out there like that. Fraud. How how rampant was the fraud? Um, well, it's it, it is a growing problem um, with uh, Social Security numbers being out there. Um, fraudsters are out there. They do tend to prey on our senior citizens, um, and so we want to do everything that we can to uh, help prevent that and protect the identity of our people with Medicare. Absolutely. So let's just say for the sake of argument, people are listening uh, to this right now. Uh, they, they're a podcast or listening to it live and they want to figure out exactly how they go about checking to see when their card's going to get there. What What's happening? What do they need to do? If they want additional information, there's a couple of great resources that they can access. One of those is 1-800-MEDICARE. So they just call that number, and we have counselors who are available to answer any of their questions or provide other assistance that they may need. Um, We also have a website, Medicare.gov, that they can go to, and all the information that they need to know about the new Medicare cards is available there. Fantastic. Dr. Lisa McAdams, Acting Regional Administrator for the Southwest Regional Office for the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We appreciate you coming on today and telling us about this. I think a lot of people, again, as we head into that New Year time, they're going to be getting their cards. And the more information they have, the better it's going to be for them. Thanks so much for coming on today, Doc. Well, thank you. And thank you for helping us to get this word out. We appreciate that. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter, C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. It is the Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show.